Hey, it's Dan, welcome back. I am in Monterey and I am just outside the Monterey Bay Aquarium. I'm gonna be filming here today. And uh, before we get into it, the big lie, the big, big lie that we're all continually being told right now is that inflation is not a big problem, but it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem with all of our lives, with absolutely everything that we're purchasing right now. And uh, that being said, I mean, you guys see it affecting you. There's news today that's just breaking, that's, that's catastrophic as far as inflation, but you cannot lie and you cannot get away from these numbers right now. So before I get into it, please take a second, hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, share this with all your friends and colleagues, and uh, let's get into it. You know, before I get into the first main story, I wanna share something with you about the MGM Grand Resorts. The MGM Grand Resorts is going to be selling over a hundred million dollars worth of Picasso paintings. Why is that? Well, because they see the writing on the wall. They see how many problems that they're having with, uh, uh, with lack of people there. Now they're talking about the numbers are skyrocketing. Uh, Vegas is doing better than ever. Okay, the problem with this, the people that are going to Vegas right now are spending such small amounts of money that you don't have the whales traveling internationally, you don't have the high rollers that are coming in. The big shows that bring in the big money are not happening, the concerts, those are not happening yet, and it's a true problem with uh, Vegas right now. So they're selling $108 million worth of Picasso paintings. The story's below, but the reason for that is art is at an all-time high. They can get more for it now than they can ever uh, so in history for these Picasso paintings. So you're starting to see things like this where they're unloading things. It's much easier to do this than to get a loan, than to go to a bank and go to traditional finances. So they're gonna start to sell assets. You're gonna see more and more people doing things like this in the future and businesses do this. So that being said, you know, do you guys think things are good right now? Do you think things are, are okay? Uh, these are signs of how bad they are right now. As I do this video, I'm going to interject a lot of the sea life that we saw at the aquarium. It's very cool. Really enjoyed the experience. Monterey has been absolutely fantastic. It is amazing how, uh, um, you know, how this town really got quiet during the week. So that being said, the biggest problem is inflation. Inflation, they're trying to say that it's, it hasn't gone up much, but it's gone up in the last month, 5.4% that they're willing to tell us, but they're not going to include volatile food, food prices. Well, think about what I just said. You don't want to have food prices included in inflation. That's absolute lunacy. Okay. So it's not fair that, that they're talking about this. We haven't had a jump like this since 1982 in, uh, in inflationary prices. So if you guys don't think that this is a problem, you're, you're kidding yourself. Uh, the uh, Congress just put together an infrastructure bill that did not give any stimulus to anybody. It did not do anything to deal with inflation. It did not do anything to help what you're suffering through right now. And that's a huge problem, guys. This is something that, that you know, the average person is struggling right now. They're struggling to get a good job. They're struggling to get to pay their rent, they're struggling to get through this difficult time, and Congress did nothing for this. They're talking about infrastructure bills and charging stations and, and ridiculous things like that, that that have nothing to do with the core problems that people are dealing with on a regular basis. So, you know, share your thoughts downstairs in the video below, description below, and, and just tell me what you guys are thinking about this. Now to stay on the inflation theme, there's a real problem with uh, inflation internationally. It's not just here in the States. And India has got the biggest inflationary spike that they've had 
in almost 30 years, guys. So it's happening all over the place. I get stories from Holland, Spain, the UK, now India. I mean, it's happening everywhere, guys. And inflation is so bad right now that people have made raises this year. People have gotten paid more money to go back to work, but the inflationary spike has taken out those wages. So even if you've gotten paid more, basically your buying power is that of 2019, January of 2019. So we're receding, we're going backwards. And this is a huge, huge problem because you're not making enough to pay for goods and services, to live a normal life, to buy gas, to buy food, to you know buy clothes, buy everything, and not have it affect you monetarily in such a way that you're going backwards right now. So again, share your thoughts, guys, if you think that, that things are great in your city, which I love those stories, but guys, this is a true problem for everybody internationally. And you know what's being done about it? Nothing, nothing's being done about it by the politicians. So Fed's not doing anything. Nobody's doing anything. As we have all these problems with landlords and with tenants and with people paying rent, uh, Berlin is actually voting to seize all corporate real estate from landlords. You cannot make this stuff up. They want to call it free housing after they're done. Uh, but think about this. If you are a business that owns real estate in Berlin, Germany, you could potentially lose it. So I think you're gonna see some radical stuff happen with this. It's not really on the mainstream media. Uh, I'll share it with you, but uh, 240,000 units is what they estimate this could be. So how do you guys feel about that? I think there should be free rent, free love, free everything for everybody. I think it's kind of preposterous myself that they're going to give uh, housing away for nothing to these people. And uh, just want to get your thoughts on that because, and how, you know, no, okay? That's my thought. But uh, share your thoughts on this, guys. Now, Monterey's been pretty good as far as the retail climate and restaurant climate and people being open, but it does have its closures, like places like this, shopping areas, large stores that just went down for the count. And you can't help but notice things like this, which is uh, the Cannery Row Brewery. Now, this place is huge. I mean, this place made beer. This place employed over 100 people, I was told and uh, it went down for the count and couldn't survive, you know, the inevitable downturn that happened over the last year. So, you know, it happens everywhere. It happens in resort towns, it happens in your city, but the problem with this is that there's just no, no way around it. There's just no way to, to, to fix this stuff. And uh, people are not spending the money like they normally did. As we walk through this place, you know, and as, as you look at the the old menu that was up here for this place just recently went down. I mean, you know, reasonable prices, but if you do not have um, a clientele that's spending money, you don't have a business. So we're seeing this everywhere. And it doesn't matter if you're in Monterey or San Diego or any of these other resort towns, you're seeing it all over the place. So, uh, you know, share your thoughts, guys. Is it getting better in your areas or not? Now these next two stories you can file under the ridiculous part of business. And that is first things first is the Olympics. Uh, NBC just announced that the ratings for the Olympics were horrific. They were 42% behind 2016. They were the lowest rated Olympics ever, 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 ever in the history of Olympics. 
Did you guys watch the Olympics? Do you care about the Olympics anymore? Personally, I thought they should have scrapped the Olympics with everything that we talked about last month, but Japan had invested so much money, had no crowds, had no normal uh, uh, marketing as far as the interaction with the athletes and everything that we normally see, and it was just an abysmal failure as far as the ratings were concerned. So that being said, did you guys watch it? Now the second thing is Oregon. Oregon has just eliminated the need for high school students to be proficient in math, reading, and writing. How insane is that? Uh, the only thing that separates us from the dogs is basically learning, you know, normal education, normal, normal math, writing, reading skills. Imagine eliminating that completely. That's what they've just done. So you can file this under completely preposterous, but would you ever hire anybody from Oregon? Seriously, how do you get into college, okay? For all you people that wanna to go to college and, and get yourself a hundred grand in student loan debt, how do you do that? How do you get yourself ahead in life if you cannot read proficiently, if you cannot write proficiently, you know, if you can't do math, okay? Now, my kids hated school, okay? They both were okay students, but it was the one thing that made them good adults okay was doing well in that so share your thoughts in this stuff guys I really want to know what you think about this I'm on the back end of that trail by the way which this is I guess the not the least romantic part of it so share your thoughts guys what do you guys think about this is it ridiculous that uh, in Oregon you don't have to worry about reading writing or math what is school for then babysitting seriously share your thoughts I know it's like a little face. <laughs> 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 Now there's so much talk about the infrastructure bill. Let me tell you what's not in it, okay? First things first, there is no more stimulus money in this. None, zero. A trillion dollars and you get nothing. There is no more rental assistance money in this. Absolutely zero, none, not a dollar. There is no more PPP money or an extension of the EIDL funding. In fact, the SBA has done such a horrific job on this that the senators are thinking about pulling the money from them for the EIDL grants. That being said, I hope that that does happen, okay? And number two, the other thing that's ridiculous is this rental assistance. There is so few counties that have distributed the rental assistance money. If you are an activist lawyer or you know of an activist lawyer, you should be suing these people and these counties for this rental assistance money as soon as possible. That would be helpful for people. But you guys sitting around talking about, you know, oh, this is terrible. Something needs to be done. Do something. Do something about this because your senators didn't do anything. They did nothing for these people. They didn't give them anything. Uh, there's no extension on anything. There's just deadlines. And the deadlines are you paying for this right now. So everybody knows somebody hurting right now. And that's a sad thing, okay? But with that being said, there's no free lunch anymore. There's nothing free. There's no free help. There's nothing that's coming out of this right now. So again, you know, share your thoughts. I'm going to look at some of these old warehouses that are abandoned and things like this, but I get the impression that these places have been closed for a long time. So share your thoughts. But again, you know, you're a lawyer and you want to do some good, sue for this rental assistance money in your county because it's being held down by bu uh, bureaucrats who are not helping people. People are going to be evicted, not sleeping at night, and you could do something for that. Okay? Share your thoughts, guys, because there's no more help. There is no uh, you know, guaranteed basic income. There's none of the shenanigans that I've been written about and told that I'm stupid over. But uh, again, your congressmen or your senators, excuse me, your congress are about to vote on this, have done nothing for this. So share your thoughts, guys. Is that me? Yeah, it is. 
So Monterey has been absolutely amazing. And one thing that uh, I wanted to end this video with are two quick stories. First one is uh, about one of the largest crypto heists ever was on the Poly Network. Somebody broke into the Poly Network, which is a, a crypto exchange, and stole $611 million worth of cryptocurrencies. Ethereum, uh, Shiba Inu, and other cryptocurrencies. And, uh, you know, I got flooded today with all these stories about how, hey, it's not, a, it's not all bad news, Dan. These people gave half the money back. So they're giving, it looks like $300 million of the money back and they you know hooker with a heart of gold thief with a heart of gold whatever guys do you want anybody going through your bank account do you want anybody going through uh you know your house your your credit union your your brokerage account i mean the fact that somebody went through these you know this crypto exchange and and fleeced it the way that they did is no big deal okay people are acting like it's nothing they've already got the person's email they've already got one of their crypto addresses you know wallet addresses it's ridiculous guys it's 611 million dollars the next story that i want to live you know that i want to finish with and leave you with is the housing market is definitely cooling internationally around the world the first things first what is the worst housing market on the planet earth right now as far as the bubble is concerned okay according to wolf street it's canada there's a great story out of canada where there is a couple that with fear of missing out went and paid too much for a house and with paying too much for this house they thought it would be great that, to buy a house that was hours away from their office because they were going to WAH. WAH. I hate acronyms. think they're ridiculous. Say what you want to say. And that's work at home. Well, then they found out that the office that they work for called them back into the office and they're hours away from, from where their office is located. So they can't do it. They cannot drive back and forth four and five hours a day to effectively work. So they've got to sell the house. Only problem now is the house has gone down a hundred grand. So they can't sell the house. So you're going to see this more and more and more. The second worst housing market on the planet Earth is New Zealand. Okay? Who knew? But according to Wolf Street, they've got all these different algorithms and, and figures. It's absolutely fantastic. And the United States, we're number seven, guys. Oh, like we just haven't been number one in anything. We can't even be number one in bad real estate. But you guys are going to see this over and over again. You're going to see houses that people have paid way too much money for, thinking that they were, you know, oh, I don't want to miss out on this market. Well, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out and you're going to be in debt forever. These people that bought this house in Canada cannot even rent the house out for what their payment is. That's how juiced up they are. Now, I do a lot of weird things for fun. One of them is go through open houses and listen to other people now that things are back open. And I had a realtor in an area in Tustin, nice area in Tustin Meadows, where they were saying, doesn't matter. What you pay for this, you can rent it out the next day. And I'm like, wait a second. People just walked in the front door. You have no idea how much they're putting down in this house. You have no idea what kind of money that these people make or you know, if they're putting 10% down or 3% down or whatever but don't worry, you can rent this place out for what you have. Well, this just was proven in Canada that these people, you know, overpaid for this house. So you're gonna see this more and more and more, and you're gonna to start to see, I, I love when realtors get desperate because they have to learn to sell. They have to learn to negotiate. And you take people like Scott Walker, who's been around the block and knows what he's doing, okay? That's the guy I want in the trenches with me. So that being said, you're gonna see people that overpaid with realtors that have no business negotiating lunch okay little alone a house so that being said i'm gonna end it here thanks for watching don't forget to hit the like button uh monterey has been absolutely beautiful this downtown area is just very nice lots of sidewalk cafes uh, hit the like button hit the subscribe button share it with all your friends and colleagues join the email list if you want more access to me join the patreon channel and I will see you guys very soon.